Den of the Wolfman by Ronald M. Kimmons, prequel to the novel Wild River. Chapter 1. Do you have any books on murder? The bookseller raised his eyes from the book he was reading, gazing over the rims of his spectacles to size up the man who had just pushed the door open. He was a pale-skinned fellow with a broad-brimmed hat, and his hand trembled slightly as he held the door open. The bookseller closed his book and placed it upon the counter. Murder? asked the bookseller. Why, yes, um... The customer removed his hat, and his full head of tousled black hair contrasted heavily with the two white tufts on the shopkeeper's head. He still stood in the doorway, as if unsure whether this was a safe place to enter or not. I read a bit in the paper about the wolf man, and it got me thinking about such things. Oh, yes, said the bookseller. Ghastly business. Now let me see. Are you interested in fiction or non-fiction? Well, stories, said the customer. Right, come this way. The bookseller motioned for the customer to enter, and the customer complied. The smell of paper and leather permeated the place and created a comforting aura that put his mind at ease. Leading him along, the bookseller stepped over to a shelf, held out his index finger as he searched for a title, and then snagged a particular volume. Here we are, said the bookseller, the curious case of Mr. Smith. Misters? Yes, you see, in the story, this man named Smith had multiple personalities. Like, two people in one body? Precisely. Anyway, one of the personalities was a respectable family man, a pillar of the community. And the other? The other was a cold-blooded killer. The pale man's eyes went wide. Was he now? And did the respectable man watch? Watch? The bookseller raised his white eyebrows. Did the respectable man watch the killing? Oh, well, I suppose you could read it to get all the details, but he was not aware of it at first. And what happened to him in the end? Well, I don't want to spoil the story for you. It's all right. I'll be buying it either way. What happened to him in the end? Oh, if I remember correctly, he was caught and taken to a sanitarium. A sanitarium? Why? Well, because he suffered from delusions that caused him to kill people. I see. How much for the book? Tin copper, said the bookseller. The pale man reached into the pockets of his dirty overalls, fished around, and eventually came up with the required amount. The shopkeeper thanked him, dropped the coins into his own pocket, and handed him the book. The pale man flipped through the book, reading a sentence here and a sentence there, as if he were seeing something marvelous for the first time in his life. Do you have any others? he asked. On murder? asked the bookseller. Yes. Hmm, well, there is The Monster of Mill Downs. I haven't actually read it, but it may be of interest to you. I'm told it's a gripping read. What sort of a monster is it? It is a man who was transformed into a horrific beast by a witch. The customer seemed displeased by that. Is the story told from his perspective? No, it is told from the perspective of the local marshal. His apparent displeasure grew. Are there any murder stories told from the perspective of the victim? The bookseller tilted his head at that. The victim? Yes, are there any stories that show what the victim is feeling when he's murdered? You know, what is she thinking? Is she scared? Is she excited? Is she curious about who the killer is and what he cares about? What kind of pain does she feel? That sort of thing. Maybe for all the victims of a serial killer. Maybe like a, a collection of stories together. What is that called? An anthology? Yes, an anthology, an anthology of the experiences of murder victims told from their view. The shopkeeper removed his spectacles. No, I don't believe I have any books like that, Mr. Taolon, he said. Nice to meet you. And your name, sir? Doram, said the shopkeeper. Now, Taolon, are you familiar with any stories of that sort? I myself find the idea quite different. No, I just... I just thought of the idea today, and I wanted to know if anyone had written anything like that. Not that I know of, said Doram. Perhaps you should write something like what you describe. It seems like a novel idea. The pale man laughed. Oh, no, sir. I'm no writer. I just like to read sometimes. It does seem like a dark idea as well, though, don't you think? Oh, yes, said the pale man. Quite dark. Perhaps I shouldn't. Hmm. Well, you know, it's just stories after all, right? Yes, quite right, said Doram. Paolan held up 
the curious case of Mr. Smith and gestured to it. Well, thanks for the book, good sir, he said. For a moment there, he had lost most of the anxiety and discomfort that he had initially brought with him into the shop. It was coming back now. You are quite welcome, said Doram. Come back when you are done with it, and let me know what you thought. I will, said Taolon. He turned, opened the door, and rather quickly left. Doram looked after the departing man for a moment. An uneasy thought settled upon his mind. He brushed it away and returned to the book he had been reading. He could not regain his focus, though. The words ended up becoming a parade of indiscernible letters. He finally gave up on the task and went to work straightening up his shelves.